Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon us all. Today we will be discussing the creatures of the Almighty. All creatures that we see around us have been created by the same Maker. This is what we believe. So in actual fact we are part of one family. How? Because we have a common creator. And this is reiterated in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, Al-khalqu iyalullahi fa'ahabbu al-khalqi ila Allahi he says, all creatures, the entire creation, is like a family of Allah, a family of the Maker. And the best from amongst them is He who is best to them, which means to the family of the Maker. So if I want to know if I am the best, I need to ask myself, how good am I to the rest of creatures? We have spent some time in the past speaking about family and relatives and other human beings and so on and unity and what have you. So many topics. But today we'd like to discuss it from a different angle. When we have the surroundings, we as Muslims are taught to be at peace with the nature around us. It is prohibited for us to destructively uh, come to plants and forest and destroy. We are not allowed to do that. Yes, if there is use for it, you need firewood. Within limits, bearing things in mind, you want to cut one tree down, you plant another one. And we need to concentrate on the type of teachings that the religion has because definitely many people are ignorant. They don't know. They have no knowledge. And we think we can just chop off a tree without even mentioning the name of the Creator. What is so important about mentioning the name of the Creator when cutting a tree down? Or even when cutting your lawn for that matter? The giver of that life is the owner of that life. Without his permission, what right do I have to cut a tree down? He gave the life to the tree. I don't have the right to take it. But he has permitted me to take it if there is a necessity for it on condition that I understand that he is the maker and the giver of the life. So I need to say Bismillah or in the name of my maker, in the name of the worshipped one, in the name of the giver of that life, I am taking this with his permission. Then I cut the tree down. That is the proper way of doing things. The same applies to animals. We have animals who have li that have life. We cannot just destructively destroy an animal. In some cultures you find people take an axe and they hit the animal at the top of the head and they destroy an animal and make a big party out of it and they are laughing and this is cruelty to animals. Whereas we are taught as Muslimin that firstly you need to seek the permission of the maker. Without that you cannot consume, even though we want to consume. You cannot consume an animal without the permission of the maker. And when you seek the permission of the maker, you need to use the sharpest blade possible. I'm sure those of you who shave, you would know that when the blade is very sharp, it actually beats your sensory system. Where you've been slit, you only notice 10 minutes later that, wow, there's a cut here. You know, so why? Because of the sharpness of the blade. So Muhammad, may peace be upon him, says you should use a sharp blade and you rapture the central nervous system in such a humane way so quickly that the animal does not feel that it has come to a halt. It basically comes to a halt without feeling anything because you know how the central nervous system works. When you say, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, I am taking the name of the, ma the giver of this life. That's what you're saying. With the permission of the giver of this life, I am taking it away. What happens? You calm the animal down. We've done it. We know how it works. It's calm, completely calm. And when the animal is calmed, one quick movement and you find the message cannot move from the bottom half of the body to the brain because the jugulars are slit. And from the brain, it cannot come back to say, I am hurt and feel the pain. Those of you who know how the central nervous system works, so there is no pain felt and it numbs to a halt. And the fact that it may kick a little bit would actually result in all the blood coming out, which is so humane and so pure because sickness lies in the blood. If I am sick, what do I do? I go for a blood test. Then the sickness is picked up in the blood. So if the blood is drained, there is no sickness. And for this reason, it's important for us to know that is the most humane way. And we believe that it is so humane that nobody can come up with a better system. Sometimes you have people who say, no, let's, you know, concuss the animal firstly. 
Who said that by concussing the animal you are actually doing it a favor? You are confusing the animal. On one hand you've concussed it and on the other hand you want it to feel that it's dead and the other hand you'd like it to kick for the quality of the meat and the giver of the life has not even told you to do that and this is why not only the Muslims but the Christians as well as the Jewish followers have all the original old system of slaughter is exactly the same. This is kindness to the creatures of the maker. And this is a part of it and I've decided to incorporate it in this topic because everyone eats and everyone has things that are, or should I say most people have either fish or mutton or chicken or beef and all this is life given by the maker. We believe in the Quran, the Almighty says we have created all this for you O oh man to make use of responsibly. So if you are going to be responsible and you're going to take the life away without wasting it in the most beautiful humane manner seeking the permission of the Almighty we will say that is permissible to eat. In other words I think we would be familiar with the term halal. This is the meaning of the term halal. It means it has been done in a specific way seeking the permission of the giver of that life to say we are doing this in a certain way with the idea of consumption and not just wastage and we have drained the blood and so on. So it is important for us to realize this and it is important for us to know that the giver of the life is the supreme owner of the life for us to kill destructively is unacceptable. And this is why even when it comes to hunting, we are not allowed to hunt as a sport as Muslims. We are not allowed to hunt as a sport lions and deers and elephants and bucks just to shoot them and to leave them there to die and to have had fun and to say I killed so many lions. Who said that and why? Even snakes for that matter. When it comes to a snake, when it is harmful and coming to you, you have the right to seek the name of the giver of that life and then destroy it for the reason that it may attack you. The same applies to the other harmful animals. But to go out of your way to search for these animals and look for them and make them a sport and start killing them, even that we do not teach as Muslims. Imagine how pure religion, imagine how much consideration we have for animals. Do you know that even when it comes to a dog, there was a certain woman mentioned by the Prophet, may peace be upon him, that she had very bad habits, but she was granted paradise by the Almighty because one day she saw a dog that was thirsty and she decided to spend some time to give it some water. And because of that water what happened it resulted in the pleasure of the giver of that life the Almighty and he said I am granting this woman paradise without reckoning because of her good deed we need to know that if we are taught goodness to the other creatures of the Almighty I end with a question don't you think humankind is far more important until we meet again assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh